King's Highway Christian Church online worship service on this beautiful Sunday morning. I hope you can feel God's blessing during this time together. I have news for you today. We might start meeting in our beautiful sanctuary very soon. We are working on that and will let you know as soon as a decision is taken. Of course, some specific directions will need to be followed and some requirements will need to be met during our service. But all information will be given to you. I want to share an article that I, that I read this week. It is about mountain climbers who have reached the top of great mountains like Mount Everest in Asia. However, they have lost their lives on their way down from those mountains. Why? What goes wrong on their way back? It is a good question. The article says that climbers need a lot of effort, discipline, patience, and preparation to be able to climb those mountains. Reaching the top is a great accomplishment and a great moment for celebration. However, it is not the end of the adventure. It is mandatory to leave that dangerous area as soon as possible. So climbers need to start the, their way back. This requires a lot of effort as well. It is not as easy as sliding on a slide. They need to take it easy, work hard and with discipline to be able to get down alive. The article relates the tragedy of the mountain climbers with the current coronavirus situation. We have reached the top and now we are ready to descend, to go down. However, we have to be patient and not go so quickly for we could face a second wave. Let's do it step by step following directions carefully so that we don't lose anyone else. The reopening is not going to be as easy and as quick as we want. The key might be to reintegrate to a normal life with love, thinking not in us, but in those who are around us, for the good of others preaching the new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. And now to start this service, I would like to light this candle. And also, I would like to say a prayer. Please join me in prayer. Wonderful God, we pray for your holy presence to be with us during this time of worship. Open our minds to receive your message. Open our hearts to your love. Thank you, God, for every blessing you give us. Thank you for your faithfulness, mercy, and love, and for the gift of salvation that brings us together. Be delighted, dear Father, in our praise and worship and give us the blessing of your holy presence. Forgive our sins as we open our hearts before you. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray and give you thanks. Amen. I will be in charge of the rest of the service today. George is dedicated to taking care of Mrs. Kathy this week. She fell down and had to have another surgery yesterday, actually on Friday. Please have them in your prayers.
everyone. This is the children's moment. So please bring the little children to watch this portion of the video. Hi children, how are you today? Hello again, see, I have some staff around me today. And of course, Max is here with me this morning. See, I have some items and I'm going to show them to you. And I want you to tell me what do you think about when you see each one of them. For example, what do you think of when you see a guitar? Yes, music, right? You can make music with a guitar. Uh, singing, very good because somebody can be playing the guitar and singing at the same time. Dancing, of course, yes. How about when you see books? What do you think when you see books? A library, that's a good guess, yes. School, of course. Reading studying, learning, very good, very good. How about when you see an umbrella? What do you think of when you see an umbrella? Rain, right? Rain, of course. It's good uh, to use it when it is raining. And also, it is good to use when it is very sunny because it can protect you from the sun, very good. How about when you see a heart? What do you think of when you see a heart? Yes, you think of love. Very good. You think of, of love, things that you love, right? For example, I love hamburgers. My God, I love hamburgers. What do you love to eat? Uh, can I guess? Do you love to eat ice cream or pizza or chocolate? <laughs> yes, right? Very good. Also, we can, we can think of people that we love, right? For example, I love my family. I love my daughter, my husband. I love my dog, Max. I love you too. Yes. Who do you love? I know, I know you love your family as well. And you love your pets as well. Very good, very good kids. You know, the Bible also tells us about love. See, here in the Bible. The Bible says that um, somebody loves us very, very much here and it tells us about the greatest love we have ever known. Do you know what is the greatest love we have ever known? Who loves us in that way? Yes, you're right. God loves us very much. Very good. How did God show his love to us? How did he demonstrate that he loves us? Yes, he, he created everything that exists and he's always taking care of us. That's, those are good, good answers. But you know, the way he showed us his love is because he sent his only son to die for us on the cross. And in that way, we can get salvation. We can go to heaven and live with him forever. That is the greatest love because that is the gift of eternal life. So we can go to heaven and have eternal life with God. Isn't that great? Let us pray to give thanks for that. Join me in prayer. Wonderful God, Thank you for loving us so much that you sent your only son, Jesus, to this world. Lord Jesus, thank you for giving up your life for our salvation. Help us to love one another as you have loved us. In your holy name we pray, amen. Thank you, children.
Remember, the greatest love is God's love and love one another as he loves us, right? Thank you. Bye-bye. Welcome to the sermon this morning. The scripture readings come from the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 13, and the word of God says, Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And also from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 35 and 34, the Lord Jesus says to us, A new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. It is true, everyone around us knows that we are Christians by the way we love one another. It was said by Jesus. In fact, according to the Gospel of John, this is the only commandment Jesus explicitly gave to his disciples, which includes you and I, and insisted that we must keep it. A new commandment, the Lord said. But what is new about it? Love has always been around. I cannot think of a time when love wasn't around in some way. Think about all the songs you know that have the word love in their titles. If you listen to the oldest station, you may remember Diana Ross and the Supremes singing Baby Love or Stop in the Name of Love. How about the Beatles singing All You Need Is Love or Elvis Presley singing Burning Love and many other songs dedicated to love. And we can go even far back in time or go ahead to the present and we will find many songs with the word love in their titles. So love is here, love is there. Love is everywhere. I am sure that during Jesus' life, there was love. Before and after Jesus' time, there was love. Love has always been around. And surely, there is love now. So, why is this a new commandment? The Lord Jesus basically said, you who are my disciples love one another you who believe in me love one another you who are my followers love one another you who are members of my church love one another he's giving us a new commandment which really is not new but is it the key is Love one another as I have loved you. Love one another as I have loved you. Let us take a look at how Jesus loved those around him. He not only cared for the poor, he worked for the poor, healing them, feeding them, defending them, including them, and forgiving them. That is much more than just caring for someone. He not only served others, he humbled himself in serving others, washing the feet of his disciples, serving a farewell dinner for his friends, touching the impure and sick people with his hands in order to heal them. He not only loved those who loved him, he loved his enemies. He repaired the ear of the soldier who went to capture him. He 
he forgave the ones who crucified him. He not only saved his friends, he gave his life on the cross for them and for everyone else, including us. This commandment of loving one another is new because of the kind of love it is. It is not a selfish love that says, this is what I want, give it to me if you love me, or I love you because you love me as well. The love Jesus is, is talking about in this new commandment is a love that implies sacrifice, dedication, and commitment. It is a love that doesn't have a self-serving agenda. When I was in seminary, I read a book named The Long Walk. It tells the story of a soldier in the Polish army when the Germans invaded Poland during World War II. Trying to escape from the Germans, he ended up in Russia where he was captured by the Russians and accused of being a spy. They sentenced him to 25 years of hard labor in Siberia. Along with hundreds of other prisoners, he was transported by train thousands of miles east. Then they were forced to walk about 1,000 miles north into the bitter cold of the Arctic, where the labor prison was located. Over the next six months in jail, he planned to escape. And during that time, six others joined him. So one night, the seven escaped. Shortly after their escape, they encountered a 19-year-old woman who was also on the run. Her parents had been killed by the Russians. The eight of them joined together in a collective journey to freedom. This is a true story of, of survival that took more than one year going through the bitter cold of Siberia to the Himalayas and the unmerciful heat of the desert. One thing that impressed me in this story was that these eight people demonstrated love for one another. They were all different. They have different nationalities and spoke different languages, but none of them was selfish. It was one for all and all for one. They were committed to one another. They moved beyond and really understood what loving one another was. A new commandment? Yes, it is new in some ways because it requires sacrifice, dedication, and commitment. It is a love that doesn't have a self-serving agenda. This reminds me of all those people who are essential workers who risk their lives and their families during this pandemic. They are on the front lines, helping customers, delivering necessities, sanitizing places, and taking care of the sick in the hospitals. They are the reason we can shelter in place. It is only because of their sacrifice, hard work, and bravery in the face of danger that many of us can continue caring for our families, feeding ourselves, and being as safe as we can in this moment. My heart is filled with gratitude and love for them. But the most important thing, I cannot wait to find opportunities to love and serve them back. A new commandment was given to us. Love one another as the Lord has loved us. 
Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Let us pray. Loving Jesus, thank you for teaching us how to love one another. Thank you for the opportunities we have to love and care for others. Help us to show your love in each one of our actions. Help us to find out new ways to love our neighbor. Teach us to place ourselves in the needs of others as you did it. And also teach us to love without judging one another. Bless us in keeping your new commandment and guide us to hear what you say to us. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love.
Life is worth the living just because he lived. Welcome to celebrate communion with us once again this morning. Hello, everyone. I hope you're ready. We have our elements on the table. This week, I watched a video where some kids were answering a question. The question was, what is love? You know, kids are very honest and sometimes they are very funny as well. So let me share some of their answers. One of them says, love is when you give somebody most of your french fries without making them giving you any of theirs another one says love is when my mom gives my daddy the biggest piece of the pie <laughs> another one says Love is when your dog licks your face, even though you left him alone all day. <laughs> I agree. And the last one, a child says, love is when my daddy makes coffee for my mom and he takes a sip of it before giving it to her just to make sure the taste is good. <laughs> you may have your own answers for this question as well. What is love? You know, we can have the definition of love in many places, in our family, in people around us, in our church, in books, in music, in a song, and in this communion as well for here we remember jesus's words when he said there is no greatest love than this that somebody lays down his life for his friends and we are his friends let us give thanks let us pray wonderful jesus thank you for loving us so much Thank you for the opportunity to remember your love every time we celebrate this table. Bless us with your love and help us to love one another as you love us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And once again, we remember the Lord Jesus that night when he took bread in his hands and he gave thanks, and he blessed it, and broke it, and offered it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, given for you. Eat this bread in remembrance of me. Likewise, he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, This is my blood of the new covenant that is poured out for your forgiveness and salvation. Drink this cup in remembrance of me. Let us partake in communion. And once again, we give thanks to God for the opportunities to celebrate this table and for the love we remember every time we partake in this communion. May the blessing of God the Father, the love of Jesus Christ, our Savior, may the presence of the Holy Spirit be, be with, with you, you each and, and every day. day. Thank you. Bye-bye.